Manga lufa tosi isa panga uya ma singalu ma isi foi susi ya panga sa ya yi wolin toni to sa umai ma usa panga ma sumu ya asa toni ai usuma sa ni sa ma tunga lue le umu lea ma lue ma tunga lue kres tete ya pe sa ma wa ma suma pa singalu sa sa panga. I know a woman named to San Elvan Far, or Lima, the old one woman. A man and woman, so I was sunny. In America, my latter father of town, a winger, man, I mean, only not a tillion at our lane. A la woman for so I was sunny. He has so much energy, so much talents. You know, the woman who is my I know it's really hard to replace him. Until the little piece of sea, the little one father you see la. To find to replace him as well. Sunny piano for two million to pull on a layer. Sunny, when I use real for my ma. Tony, mulatto. Only. If you are a senior successful more to Plangali and Fanda Musila, my mother will tell Fanda no, I know. Malio, you know, when to Uma to a foot to Uma for Fab, tell me the man I will be. Mwe Fatasi tell Noah, be a fear for no Noah, Talai, everything. Or they tell me in Australia almost every week we talk. And no ama, my four five is of a young appeal. So I have a party on my little, my singer, my little no ama for five wife, and this of a young appeal. My, you know, what a melter of my little. That is you, ma, wa, or a matu aina. Everybody will cry. Everyone. Um, because uh, it's like a brother to me. And uh, after a couple of days, and, uh, I realized that life is, we, you know, temporary. That we live, that we, sometimes we take advantage of the opportunity of existing and living without knowing, you don't know. When you gonna, uh, when when you gonna be gone? And uh, it's really hurt when I the time you tell me I will be leaving soon. I said, "On na fa mesi tu alili for tu yashi tel tu nua ma ya la mutanga sa ma futa mali uso poli wo fo ya sani ma sani." I would say, best friend, it's just like a brother to me. Family, I know they do it at the Australia. No for allo. But for the only, I ain't got no no. Only to the no one who are busy only. They for their own. Sapa timun muli ng mama fukai. Makar mo ay ma kaliye tala tay fam tala na fuyo tay mi ola ay tima tala last time nga matul no ay ma pe ole to sa pati ay maliulo ay wala man ay na wo maliulo so ay sa matul no ay ma no ay mi fuyo tay we so saan may matul na nga ito yeah I never expect the male to be a good person. I will 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 be a good person. 
you know, it's really hard to replace him. Yeah, I can do no well for my mother, I'm nearly a tour. Ella, I'm a little half a man. That would fight us here. I'm a beautiful foreigner. And if you are a tour with that, too. Yeah, I'm a little bit so. The tour for it, I'm not to see the fear that's so toughy. Was a hook on who my who call all the way up, poor appear as a toughy. I appear as one of my friends, my who call on the very message. Call him so many times. Of your car, why? What's okay? No, can you call up Maka and Wamaka and Wamaka? Yeah, move with ya. I last will feel a call of a bear. I don't know why would he return my son here. I can't walk out Lord as Kofia and I have his use of a man. Yeah, that to to a two year to a little for my young family. Yeah. Let me read God's word before we start our sermon this morning. It's found in Psalms 29 and it reads like this. Praise the Lord, you angels of his. Praise his glory and his strength. Praise him for his majestic glory, the glory of his name, come before him, clothed in sacred garments. The Lord, the voice of the Lord echoes from the clouds. The God of glory thunders through the skies. So powerful in his voice, so full of majesty, it breaks down the cedars, it splits the giant trees of Lebanon, it shakes the Mount Lebanon and Mount Syria. They leap and skip before him like young calves. The voice of the Lord thunders through the lightning, it resounds through the deserts and shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord spins and topples the mighty oaks. It strips the forest bare. They whirl and sway beneath the blast. But in his temple, all are praising glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Amen. I've used the, the beautiful words of Psalms 29 in order to give a beautiful welcome for you who are able to share this sermon this morning on God's Sabbath day. Six days have passed. We heard a beautiful lesson this morning. But now it's time for the sermon and I would like to just humbly welcome each and every one of you. From our leader, Pastor Willie, his good lady, Diana, the family, all the World Committee members, all the pastors, and everyone who is Sistek. And if you're not Sistek, a big warm welcome to you also, that you're able to share this morning here in this tabernacle to share God's word. May he bless his word, may he bless our listening, and may he bless and anoint myself so that I may be able to share God's word this morning. You know, this morning, 
I wake up with a heavy heart because two nights ago, a 16 year old, uh, sorry, a 15 year old boy was uh, stabbed to death. Not so far from my house in Brimbeck. What a waste of life. But I thank God also that I see communities coming up, taking responsibility, parents who are forgiving. And as we see the sort of nature of that's happening in the world, we know that time is short and we need the Lord more than ever. This morning I'm very fortunate to have a, a nice uh, singing group who I came with and I'm going to give it over to them my beautiful wife Shirley and uh, Pauline and uh, Bonamu and my pianist uh, Ace as they lead the sermon this morning with a great word and way of song and this song says burdens are lifted so if you're coming here this morning, wherever you may be, in a church, in a hall, in a sitting room, in a kitchen, in a park, wherever you may be, may this song uplift all our burdens and uplift it to Jesus Christ, who actually says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, and I will give you rest. All your pain throughout the week, Things that have happened around you and the world that we live in with prophecy. I want to tell you that this song, may the words of this song uplift our burdens to Calvary. Father in heaven, 
Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful song that we witnessed this morning. And yes, Lord, we come this morning not just to listen to your word, but we come to give you our burdens so that you may make us feel better and you will take away these burdens and make us happy again. We ask for the, thy Holy Spirit to be with me this morning for today's sermon. Void me, but may your words of your scripture be ammunition for our ears so that we may do your will but not our ways. In your name we pray. Amen. You'll find today's uh, main text in Matthew chapter 5 and verses 13. So if you have your Bibles there, I'd like to read out of the Living Bible or the American Standard Version. But here you'll see Matthew 5 verse 13. Matthew 5 verse 13. And it reads like this. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, it cannot be made salty again. Salt is useless if it loses its salty taste. It will be thrown out where people will walk on it or trample on it. Now this text is a popular text. Who said it? Jesus said it. When did he say it? After his speech or his uh, sermon on the mount. I've entitled the sermon this morning, keep it short. You are the salt of the earth. Wow. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You know, when Jesus or the Bible says, because this is not an apostle, this is not a disciple that has asked of us to be salt of the earth, this is Jesus coming down and his words to you and I, like he said on the mount, that you are the salt of of the earth. So in total, you are the salt of the earth. Now I'm not concerned with your father or a mother, a sister or a brother. All I know is that my Bible tells me that Jesus just said to us that we are the salt of the earth. Jesus knew that salt would never lose its saltiness. So what we need to do Let's have a look back in the Old Testament if there's any relation to what Jesus is telling us now and what the salt was in the Old Testament. So I'd just like to quickly reference the salt or the Masima to the Old Testament. You find in the book of Leviticus 2 verse 13. Leviticus 2 verse 13. Also you must put salt on every grain, offering you bring. You must not forget to add salt because it represents God's agreement with you. Always put salt on these offerings. So in 40 May, that salt was used as an offering. And when you gave your offering of grain, you would actually put salt in the grain. And salt became a part of the offering. Now I'm reading from the Old Testament. Number two, Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 24. I want you to reference your Bible. Ezekiel 43, verse 24. Then you will offer them before the Lord. The priest will sprinkle salt on them. So here you go. You will offer them before the Lord. What? The priest will sprinkle salt on them. What? Then they will offer the bull and the ram up as a big offering to the Lord. 
Since the big offerings, before they gave it in, they would bring the bull and the ram, and they would the priest would put soap in them. Another form of offering. So here already you can tell that the salt had a very good meaning. There's a special thing about salt. Exodus 30, verse 35. Remember, read your Bible. Exodus 30, verse 35. Mix the spices together to make a sweet smelling incense. Do this the same as a perfume. A perfume maker would do it. Also mix salt with the incense, then this will make it pure and special. Now you've got salt, which is to be mixed with spices. But not only spices, the Bible says in the book of Exodus to make a sweet smelling incense. And then do the same as you're making perfume, like a perfume maker, the Bible says. Mix salt in the incense. This will make it pure and special. Now we've got salt that makes something special and pure. Now that we have a bit of background, then we come forward again, fast forward, where Jesus says, Sit back, young people! If not, just think, you, my father, my brother, my daughter, my sister, my mother, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. The statement is bold. And as we're going to have a look later, it's not a request. Jesus is so bold to say that you he doesn't say, are you able to? He doesn't ask us if you're free. He doesn't say, um, by the way. No, he comes with you. 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 Are the salt of the earth. And if you read in the Old Testament that we came, you become an offering, you become pure, you become special. There's something about being salt that Jesus wants us to be like, that he chooses us and he wants us to be salt of the earth. Now in order to get the whole context out of the whole uh, sermon, we must now look at his sermon on the mountain. Because uh, the sermon that he preaches on the mountain, it was his sermon on Mount Olive. Not only Mount Olive, they call it the Beatitudes. In Psalm 1, it's Relaunga Famriyanga. That's what Beatitudes are, the blessings. And there you have Jesus on the mountain, where the Pharisees are after him to kill him, to put him on the cross. And there you have Jesus on the mountain with your common people preaching the word, saying things like, and I'll read from Matthew 5, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them. You see, he was teaching them. So now you can refer, when Jesus said, you are the salt, he was teaching us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Man, what wise words. Man, what wise words. This can be a reality check for you this morning. Check your life out. Young people, come here and read the Beatitudes. See if you're going according to God's, to God's, uh, to God's law. 
to the way God wants you to live and his characteristics because blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. You know, many funerals we go to, many funerals we go to, Oh, this beautiful text that Jesus says, But blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Verse 5, blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's why I thank you for coming in and listening to God's word. They will be filled. As you come and you listen to God's word, it's not me. I'm just a vessel. But God's word is everlasting. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, when you have time, I want you to set yourself and make sure you have a good look at it. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Many people come to church with dirty hearts. That's why there's so many backstabbing that goes on. So much fake people that goes on. Why? Because Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Too many people come to church to see other people. But you see, it's when you get people to come to see God that you see people with pure hearts. And now we know where pure heart comes from. The salt is purity. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for well, they shall be called sons of God. How many fights, how many rumbles, how many fights get out of hand because of you they pretend to be the peacemaker but God says blessed is the peacemakers for they called the sons of God blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness for this is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you and falsely accuse you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For they, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, God's children this morning, these beatitudes become the characteristics of a Christian. And when the characteristic come as a Christian, and when God and Jesus saw this, and he looked at the multitudes of people, and he takes a step back and he says, you are the salt of the earth. I won't lie, he also says that he's the light of the earth, but I'm not going to touch on light this morning. I want to touch on salt. Now, I want to look at the diagram. Salt, where does salt come from? It comes from two elements in the periodic table. It's Na, which is sodium, and Cl, which is chloride. So salt, in its most uh, scientific name, is sodium chloride. So if you were to go into a shop and get, have you got any sodium chloride? 99% of the time, they will show you salt. I'll never forget the schools of uh, days of school because my favorite subjects were biology and science. So we were told to learn the periodic table by heart, of course, for you guys who are, who are about my age. And so we had to learn it. So even to today, I still have it in my mind. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluoride, neon, magnesium, magnesium, argon, potassium, <laughs> the 20 elements and then what happened is that you had to get these elements 
and see which one went together. That's why if you say, what's H2O? It means it's got one of hydrogen and two of oxygen. Put them together and you got H2O, water. Salt is sodium chloride. Salt is to add, if you look at the dictionary, to treat, to season, to cure, to preserve. You know, when you mention salt around the Samoan community, because I am Samoan, or Pacific Islander at that, because a lot of people think I'm Tongan as well. So I am, look like a Tamasee. The salt, when you mention salt around the Pacific Island community, the first thing that comes to mind is high blood pressure. Totomawalunga, low sodium. And whenever salt is mentioned in a Pacific Island family, is when someone tastes their food and they go past the salt because it needs more salt to add flavor. Salt was used in many different ways because back in the days there was no ice box, as the Americans would say it. There was no refrigerator, there was no fridge. So salt played a big part in preserving food. Salt was used as a preservative for meats. Hence you get your poi masima. Bring the meat, put heaps of salt in it, and it will preserve it for months. Salt was used as a disinfectant. When you wanted to wash your laundry, put salt to it. If you had a gash or cut in your hand, bring salt. It would bring cleanse to it, it would clean it. It was used as an antibacterial to open wounds and injuries. Salt was mixed in dirt for farming and plantation. So it became fruitful and productive. And then you have Jesus say again, you are the salt of the earth. You see, when he says again, you are the salt of the earth, it's your identity. You cannot stop being salt. You are the salt. It's not a request, it's a command. Jesus commands you today, this morning, that you must become salt. See where your priorities lie. See where your identity is. All I know is Jesus just said this morning, you are the salt. You are the salt. You are the salt. I am the salt. You cannot stop being the salt. You see, something happens. Something happens when you become the salt of the earth. You look at the the the, um, the the book of Acts. Chapter 3, chapter 2 and 3, and they said that they, they had uh, Peter and John, and they were going, Oh, these, these men were never, they were, they were educated. They, they never knew it inside of a classroom. But the way they spoke, there's something that happened to them. And someone said, Oh, yeah, there, there's a difference in them because they had the, the salt, the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God. And when they had the Holy Spirit of God, they made a difference. Because when you're the soul of the earth, you make a difference in a tasteless world. You are the soul of the earth. You know, I look at uh, these three gentlemen, the young people. And I read this from the book of Daniel. I'll read it so that you can spare it. But I want you also to read it yourself when you're time. 
the story about the big old idol, chapter 3, verse 3, Daniel. See, all the men came stood in front of the idol of the king Nebuchadnezzar set up. Then the man who makes announcements for the king spoke in a loud voice. All of you from many nations and language groups, listen to me. This is what you're commanded to do. You must bow down as soon as you hear the sound of musical instruments. When you hear the horns, the floats, the soliers, the sambacus, the harps, the bagpipes, and all other musical instruments, you must worship the god idol, King Nebuchadnezzar, has set this idol up. Whoever does not bow down and worship this gold idol will immediately be thrown into the fire of furnace. The Bible tells me that as soon as this happens, and then it was put into active. And I want to skip all these chapters, and it goes down to verse 12, verse 11. And you also see whoever does not bow down and worship the gold idol will be thrown in the very furnace. There are some Jew Judeans who made important officials in the, in the province of their gods. And you didn't bow down to worship. They didn't bow down to worship to the gold idol he set up. Nebuchadnezzar became very angry. He called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So they brought him to so here you got a decree that anyone that does not listen or bow down to this idol will be instantly thrown into fire. Isn't it good to read God's word, huh? Man. Yoda, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. They knew they were salt of the earth. I want to read verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to explain these things to you. If you throw us in the hot furnace, the God we serve can save us. And if he wants to, he can save us from your power. But even if, we, if God does not save us, we want you to know, King, that we refuse to serve your gods. We would not worship the gold idol you have set up. Wow. Wow. You see, this morning, as you hear God's message, when it says that you are the salt of the earth, you are a person who puts, who makes a difference in the world. God's time has run out. And as God's time comes to an end, Satan knows that he will be burnt in the fire when his time comes and he's trying to take as many people with him. And young people, he's trying to take you as well. But this morning, we can make a difference. God reminds us through Jesus that you are the salt of the earth. That you can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference in your choir. You can make a difference in your church. You can make a difference. And wherever you go in your school, your education, your job, your work, you didn't have to be automatically poor. The things of this earth. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will fear God and God only. That's why 1 Peter 2 verse 9, one of my favorite texts, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are a chosen people a king's priesthood. You are a holy nation, a people belonging to God. He chose you to tell the wonderful thing he has done. He's brought you out of the darkness of his sin into his wonderful light. 
You are the soul of the earth. God chose you. You're a special person. Stop walking around like a loser with a big arm for a bit. Stop walking around feeling sorry for yourself that everyone's against you. No. You're a winner in God's books. If you were a winner, he wouldn't be saying to you this morning to be the soul of the earth. You are the soul of the earth. God chose you to preserve God's word is true. His word is true. Preserve God's word. You know it's seventh day. Six days after you keep hold. But on the seventh day is God's seventh. Soon Sunday law will be enforced. But we came to preserve God's word. Come to the earth. Give your life to God to make a difference. Like I said, you can make a difference in your AMI. Make a difference in your singing. Make a difference in the way you, you, your attitude at church. Make a difference in your family. Make a difference in your education. But make a difference to be the salt of the earth. Help those who are in need. Love those who are in need and be fruitful and productive. Amen. Be fruitful and productive. This morning, simple request. Be the salt of the earth today. Jesus will take care of you. As they sing the song to end the sermon, I want you to think to the opening words, you are the salt of the earth. Many times we think we have all the answers, we don't. Many times you think you have all the answers, you don't. But Jesus does. This morning, the title is, You are the salt of the earth. Are you willing to come to Jesus? Are you willing to say, Jesus, yes, I'm here. Too many days I gave to the devil. Too many days and years I've given to Satan. But this morning, I want to give my life to you. You are the salt of the earth. And why? As the song will sing, Jesus will take care of you. Jesus will take care of you. May God bless. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, as we're about to hear the song of appeal, that Jesus will take care of us. Lord, we ask for the anointing of us. I cannot see everybody, but you can surely see them. Wherever they may be, and they see and they feel that they need to be the soul of the earth like you have commanded us. Lord, in your holy name, in your precious name, Jesus Christ, may we become that salt of the earth that you desire so that we may make a difference in this world and be counted. Lord, bless us all. Bless us all. And prepare us for the second coming. And thank you, Lord, for looking after us and caring for us. We give our many sins in your name we pray. Amen.